Nice, Griffy. So, I guess I'm a little late again, huh? Oh, stepping in again. And then turning immediately around. I think that's his new thing. So I have, let's see, the last of the Super Supper and Kibble. So Scruffy gets a new can tomorrow. I think it's going to be the real chicken and tuna tomorrow. But I need to check. We'll find out tomorrow, I guess. Okay, got the glove on. <clears throat> so if you saw the previous video to this, I'm presuming I released it separately, but last night, about a half hour after I fed Scruffy, I heard plucking at the screen and then some loud meows following so I was just finishing my dinner and putting it away, putting the dishes away, and uh, I presume Scruffy somehow sensed I was in the kitchen and uh, was trying to get my attention. <clears throat> and I don't know where he picked up the idea of plucking the screen. I don't want him to do that. He's going to damage the screen. I don't want to have to repair it. <clears throat> but yeah, that was odd. I just fed him. And you see when I feed him, a lot of times he, you know, walks walks away. And sometimes he uh, hangs a <clears throat> sharp turn and, you know, heads out of the yard. And so I think last night he looked like he was leaving the yard again. So I was surprised that he came back so quickly and then was calling my attention so I was a little concerned because he was you know making noise and it's kinda loud with the meows that you know, he was agitated I thought maybe uh, possibly he'd gotten into another fight with another cat or something so I figured I better check up on him but uh, yeah he seemed okay so I don't know maybe he just wanted more food. So I've been giving him more food because I've been feeding him in the day now, a little bit. So I don't think he should be that hungry. But since I, you know, since I was there, I figured eh, I'll give him a little more kibble. Not sure what else to do. So after I fed him his kibble, yeah, he ended up staring into the house. So then when I got up, though, he you know walked away or walked back, and then when I uh, went inside and you know closed the screen door, he came back up to the screen door. So I opened the door and he stepped in a little bit for a little bit, and then he walked back outside. So. Maybe Scruffy just wanted some attention. I don't know. It's not exactly clear on his intentions. So, yeah. Walks in, walks out. So he wasn't rubbing up against me or anything, like he wanted pets, so I didn't bother trying to pet him. I probably could have pet him. But yeah, I was not expecting to have to deal with Scruffy again last night. I actually had things I needed to do. So I just wanted to make sure Scruffy was okay. Didn't get into another fight or something. So I think I mentioned I saw Boots, I think it was yesterday actually. Yeah, he was at my neighbor's place, so it means Boots was in the area, really close. So if Scruffy happened to go out into the front, you know, he could have encountered Boots. Got in a fight. Maybe some other cat.
I don't know how aggressively some of the other cats are. So the Siamese cat is, uh, as far as I know, usually in, you know, in this area. So I don't think that the Siamese cat wanders that far. He's, the Siamese cat tends to, I think, head hang out more down the street. He occasionally comes over here or at the, in you know, my front. I don't think I've ever seen him come in the backyard. <clears throat> but yeah, I don't know if the Siamese cat's aggressive or not. The Siamese cat looks pretty friendly, but I don't know. And then the white cats. The white cats, I don't know. Yeah, they might be aggressive. Mm. They kind of look like they own the place too, sort of like boots. But yeah, so I don't know what prompted Scruffy to try to get my attention last night. It's kind of weird. So I'm a little later tonight, so I don't know if Scruffy's going to do the same thing. And I don't know if I'm going to hear him either. <laughs> so. so yeah, sometimes when Scruffy meows, he's really loud and I can definitely hear him. And then sometimes he's a lot quieter, and so it's not guaranteed I'm going to hear him. So Scruffy hasn't quite figured out volume control, I think. It took him a while to figure out how to meow. So if you were to go back <clears throat> pretty far to my old videos, I don't know, I forgot, was it like four, might have been five, five months before he gave out his first meow. Because yeah, he was used to be completely silent. I was actually trying to teach him how to meow. And it's a feral cats, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, from what I read, is yeah, they never learn to meow because they don't have any contact with humans. And meowing is a kind of an exclusive uh, human communication tool. <clears throat> so cats communicate by. Uh, <clears throat> like vibrations and low growling things that humans can't hear all the time. Um, and the meow is, except when they're very small kittens, um, they, yeah, cats don't use meows to communicate with each other. And so it's a learned behavior to deal with humans. <clears throat> but yeah, a feral cat, since they never grew up with a human, doesn't know how to meow. So I used to set up a television right next to one of the windows here and I'd run it all day and night with you know, high volume and basically I was playing YouTube videos of cats meowing trying to teach Scruffy that you know, cats meow with humans around and so I did that for probably about five months I don't think I gave up at I think a certain point and, uh, I don't know, did I? I can't remember. I gave, probably gave up a few times and then restarted it. But Scruffy finally figured it out once. And I, I think it was a night where he was not being particularly good. He was uh, being particularly stubborn, I think. And I was <clears throat> taking the food bowl away, I remember. I, yeah, he's doing something bad, so I take the food away and then kind of make him sit and think about it before I gave him back his food. And then he kept, kept doing bad things, so I got to the point where I was thinking I was just going to take the food away for the rest of the night and, and give up. And then he let out a singular meow, which really caught me by surprise. And so I had to give him the food. <laughs> so it's like, wow, he meowed. Okay, I got to give him the food. Unfortunately, after that, he didn't meow, I think, for another month or several. So that was the only meow I got out of him for a long time. 
And then I forgot what prompted them to meow again. I have to check the videos sometime. <clears throat> but after I think the second time, yeah, you start meowing a little more. So you can get a meow every now and then. But now, as you see when he greets me, yeah, he meows meow, quite a bit. So I'm going to get Scruffy's food now. And he always seems to meow, or almost always meows, when I stand up to get the food like that. Not always. <clears throat> Sometimes he stays very silent. I think when I feed him more, he gets more silent, so he's food motivated when he meows. <clears throat> so I found it's actually bad to overfeed Scruffy. It's much less cooperative, much less friendly. So let's see, I think I saw Scruffy on the rocks early this morning. The sun came out, it was cold, but since the sun was out, you know, I'm sure Scruffy was getting some warmth from the sun by laying out on the rocks. And then let's see. I did catch him late this afternoon. Maybe not that late. He's on the table again, and he was uh, settling down next to the setup and uh, taking a nap, I think. I think I caught him as he was getting up, so I wasn't sure if he was getting up or settling down. So I tried to stay out of sight. I don't think he saw me, but I was you know, uh, standing behind the wall and holding out my arm to the camera trying to film him without him knowing I was there. I don't think he saw me and then for a moment it looked like he was getting up and I thought maybe he was going to jump off the table again onto the orange chair but it looked like he was just settling down. And then finally, uh, or at yeah, lunch, yeah, I brought up the kibble and water. I think he's waiting for me again. Hey, Scruffy. So you're waiting for me. So, get your water and a little bit of kibble. Sun's out. So I don't think we're going to get any rain today. Saw you on the rocks this morning. Some sun, huh? Wow. Trying to warm up, huh? <clears throat> okay, let me bring out your water and food. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna put down the water. And then pour the kibble. So I just got back from a run. I left too late. So by the time I got through my. I was finishing my second lap, it was already pretty dark. There was barely any sun left. I pushed on for a third lap. And then, yeah, basically got completely dark during the third lap. I was actually feeling pretty good today, so I'm kind of disappointed because I probably, I probably could have done more than four laps, and because I lost all the sun, yeah, I had to stop at three. So 
Okay, I didn't leave her away enough. I'm annoyed. So somebody, I believe with a car, ran off the road onto the sidewalk and hit a lamp post and knocked down the light entire lamppost because yeah I saw there was a lamppost that had basically completely fallen the, the base you know looked like it was you know the, the metal had twisted and bent and then ripped and you know there was uh, shattered uh, glass from the lights on the street and uh, or the sidewalk and uh, looked like there was a car bumper that's at the base of the, the lamppost. And it looked like there was also a fallen off headlight from a car. And uh, I'm not sure if the lamp, somebody had drugged the lamppost onto uh, the sidewalk or if it just happened to fall on the sidewalk because it was out of the street. So traffic was able to continue on. This, this, this is a lamppost that's like right on the sidewalk, and between the park and the and a little street. Um, it's not a very, it's not a very wide street. So it's a little neighborhood street. But uh, yeah, it's a very sharp, you know, kind of turn, a bend, turn, turn. So the park basically makes a little ninety degree. Turn. You're not supposed to be going very fast down these uh, streets. I've you know, never heard of anyone crashing, uh, you know, because of these turns. Um, I, I'm guessing the person was. I'm gonna. I'll speculate. Yeah, they're probably drunk because I. I don't know how you miss, mess up this badly. Uh, the other. The other possibility is. They just were completely not paying attention, or maybe yeah, they, I don't know why they'd be, you know, maybe they fell asleep or something at the wheel, but driving down a little neighborhood street, you know, it's, they would have had to wake up to go down the street, so I don't really believe that. I suppose it could have been uh, one of those uh, Tesla autopilot things or one of those self driving cars. I hear they're pretty bad sometimes. But, uh, seems like this this is the type of thing they you know, should have been able to handle. So I don't, I don't really believe it'd be an automated uh, driving car problem because you're not supposed to be going down that fast on the street. I doubt there was like any traffic hazard or anything. There was any strange condition that would have you know, confused the computer. So I don't think it was. Probably a drunk driver. Or you know, some unfortunate driver that had a stroke or something where they were driving or something. And they just lost control. I'm actually surprised the lamppost, so it fell, looked like it fell the opposite direction of where the car ran into it. So I'm surprised the lamppost doesn't fall onto the car. I'm not sure if they actually can design them that way or not. So is there some sort of uh, engineering trick that they designed such that if you hit a lamppost it knows to fall the other direction? or is designed to fall the opposite direction so it doesn't crush the person in the car. I guess I guess it kinda makes sense it would fall the other direction. So if I guess if you run head into it, it you're pushing it, so you go, you know, your direction. I was thinking it might bend, and so the inertia, basically, your car pushes into it, and then and inertia keeps 
the, the high part pointing in your direction while the, the base is moving out and then the thing falls on you. But I guess if it's structurally strong enough, it will just fall in one piece and knock over. I never really thought about it until now. And move the balls. I think there's a little bit of putt here on the bottom. Let's see, oh, the new, the new, or the, the street lamp, I could tell, is also, so I saw the, the wreckage, and at the top of the lamp, or, yeah, the top of the lamp post where the lights are, I saw they are using LEDs now, so. There was, uh, so technology connections. Yeah, he did a whole episode on the old orange sodium, I think they're sodium-based lamps. Sodium, so basically the old technology to light the roads. I actually found it pretty interesting. But yeah, I guess uh, my area has finally uh, removed all the sodium ones and they're all LEDs now. So I'm actually surprised. I heard there was an uh, observatory in our region that so I'd heard this, I don't know if it's true, but I heard they managed to get restrictions on the types of lights that were placed in. So the reason we used to have the, the sodium ones or and not brighter things was because they were trying to uh, not deal with light pollution, so it won't script the observatory. But yeah, these LED ones are like way brighter. And I imagine the light pollution probably really screws with the observatory. I don't know, maybe we're not close enough to the observatory. So I don't care. Or maybe they just lost the fight. So no, we're using LEDs now. Screw you. I need to sneeze soon. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yep, I had to sneeze. No, nope, I guess I ended dinner. <laughs> okay, folks, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.